My name is Gabriel Varga. I'm a six-time pro kickboxing world champion, and I am here today to help instruct you on the front kick and the roundhouse kick, both of which I deem to be the most important in the martial arts world. Now, what I want you to understand about today's episode is we're not going to be building from the very beginning. If you're somebody who is brand, brand new, this is not the video for you. This is for somebody who's been training three, four, five months, or maybe up to a few years, and you're really wanting to dial in your kicking technique and make sure that any of the errors, which I'm going to point out today, which are very common, are not happening to you. Because ultimately, we want to improve our kicking technique so it can be the best possible version of what you have to offer. And remember, even somebody like myself, somebody who's won glory belts, Bellator belts, at the beginning of every training camp, I go back to the basics and I drill, drill, drill to make sure I'm not making any of these foundational errors that we're gonna talk about right now. So let's start with the front kick. One of the first things that many people struggle with when they throw their front kick is not understanding how the head plays a massive part in the aspect of balance. So when I lift up to here, my head should be right above my foot. If I'm leaning forward or backward in that moment, I'm gonna feel very off balance when I lift my knee. I'm gonna be going, whoa, I'm always all over the place. So when I lift, my head is right here. But then as I extend my kick out, my head needs to fade backwards. And this acts as a counterbalance of sorts so that when my leg extends out, my head leans back, then I can kind of find that balance. In addition, that puts me out of punch range. So I don't have to worry about somebody smacking me in the head as I execute a front kick if I'm a little behind the start of their punch. The next area that I find many people struggle on proper front kick technique is the positioning of the foot. It sounds small, but it's actually very important because the striking surface is gonna dramatically affect how much damage you can inflict. So what a lot of people do is they lift this foot up and they extend out, but their toes are directly above their heel. This means I'm landing with the flat of my foot. I want to point my foot, but pull my toes back. In addition, and this is the spot that many children struggle, we want to flex the ankle. If we don't flex the ankle, when I throw my kick, it's gonna kinda look like a wet noodle. It's just gonna look like that. We want the leg locked right here so that when I strike out and I hit something, there's no chance of me rolling my ankle, jamming my toes, whatever other bad things can happen when I just kinda flop my foot out. We want rigid through the ankle, foot pointed, toes pulled up, and then from there, as I extend out and I lean backwards, I can make a very dangerous but very pretty front kick. The last thing I wanna mention that many people struggle with when executing their front kick is post-kick balance. They struggle because as they execute their kick, they don't put their foot right back down where it started. They either come into an excessively wide stance or maybe they kick and step off to the side in either direction and the result is I end up being out of position and now I have to adjust my foot before I can follow up with my additional shots or if I front kick and then get attacked I don't have that mobility so we want to get very good at remembering where our foot is what our ideal stance is throwing our kick and then having it return to almost the exact same spot if I can remember to do that then this kick becomes much less scary to utilize in pretty much any situation. Now moving on to the round kick, which is more advanced because it requires more body rotation. One of the very first errors that we see many people make is they under pivot. The foot they're standing on needs to turn, in my opinion, at least 45 degrees. I like to teach 90 as a preference, and you will even see some people pivot the whole 180 degrees. I'm trying to make sure that my heel disconnects from the floor as I rotate, so I have lots of mobility through the ball of the foot on the ground. And then if I want to, I could plant back down, depending on the height of my kick, but very often people choose to elevate, and then they'll drop their heel back down at the end of the kick. 
This is if you're doing a Muay Thai style round kick and you're lifting up into it, we want that elevation. If we're going low kick, we want to pivot, plant the heel down, and then lift the heel to unwind. Either of those is fine, but remembering the pivot on the round kick is absolutely essential. The next area where many people struggle is shoulders and hips do not move together. They try to do something like this. So when they round kick, they'll push their shoulder forward, but they won't rotate their hip. Or this hip will come forward, but the shoulders will not turn. We want hips and shoulders moving together to maximize the effort and the ease in this kick. Anything other than the body mechanics working together becomes very difficult. So try to remember that the body should be turning sideways and the hips and anything above it turn as well. And that just makes for a very comfortable, fluid round kick. Now kind of opposite to the front kick, where we were talking about what your head does on the front kick, our head leans back. If we do that on the round kick, it's okay. But if we wanna maximize power, I like to teach very often that our head stays over top our foot when we execute the round kick. This means that my weight shifts forward instead of me kicking and shifting my weight back. Yes, my leg still moves forward, but my head is pulling away and it's not gonna help so much in maximizing distance the same way it does on a front kick because a front kick we're poking through, but on the round kick we're coming this direction. So we should already be within range and the important thing is to maximize leverage this way. So keeping that head high, pivoting and thrusting through is really gonna help you maximize your power and make the kick fairly fluid. In addition, if you lean your head back, eventually one day, the standing leg is gonna slip out from under you and you're gonna fall down and hit the ground really hard. That is uncomfortable, that is embarrassing, and that is something we want to avoid. The final aspect of improving the round kick, in my opinion, for the basics that we're gonna talk about today, is remembering what do our hands do? If my hands flail out, especially the non-kicking arm, so if the right arm matches the kicking leg, that one can swing down. If this one pulls to the side, it's kind of dragging me downwards this direction. I don't want that. I want my hand to stay tight to my head for defensive purposes, but also for balance. If I'm going off my left foot, I skip. I whip my arm down and this hand stays ultra tight. If you can add that in, you're gonna feel your balance increase. And when your balance increases, then you can focus on increasing the speed and the follow through of your kick, which ultimately will equal more power. So those are the small tips I have for you today on those two super important kicks. If you can make sure that you're doing all of those correctly, either by adding or eliminating, depending on the situation and what I was talking about, you will have your kicks improve very quickly. Remember, I already have a full, I call it back to basics, beginner tutorial, intermediate tutorial, and an advanced tutorial that you can follow along with. Those think they're kind of like 20 to 30 minutes long. If you want to improve your technique, in much further scope than we did today, you can refer to those videos. I'll actually throw them in the description below. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed. Train hard, guys. I'll see you back here soon for another video.